round of applause. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the platform. for our children as well. Amen. We got scholarships. We don't want no kid to miss camp. I promise you. We don't want no. So if you haven't, you don't have the funds for your child to go to uh, to camp, we got it. Amen. Amen. No child gonna miss camp. Amen. So the series title today is the stories that they didn't teach in Sunday school. I'll be closing them out. And it's another weird name. The title is called Onesimus. Remember that one? I don't even remember that one. So I might be saying that one sign is long emphasis. But the big the book of Philemon is a little book between the book of Titus and Hebrews. It is also known as one of Paul's uh, prison epistles. The book of Philemon is a story about a slave, one called Onesimus, who ran away from his slave master named Philemon. Philemon was uh, 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 was covered by Paul. He, he was converted in Paul's missionary. He had accepted Christ. When Paul came to Coloss, Colossae, and our Bible is called Colossians, and he became a devoted Christ. He was a rich man because of he could throw a whole service in his house. He said his house had to be huge. But Onesimus was a slave uh, who stayed in the house of Philemon, so he knew the family very well. He was treated very well, but he still wanted his freedom. <laughs> he was a slave. And he still wanted his freedom. And when Onesimus ran away, he's supposed to have stolen some money from uh, uh, Philemon. So Philemon really, you know, was, he, was a, he, he had got saved after this. He had slaves, but Christ came into his life, but he still was holding on to that part, that slavery part. So when Onesimus ran away, he escaped to Rome like, like countless other runaway slaves and get lost in the crowd in Rome. But during Onesimus' uh, time in Rome, he ran into Paul. And got saved. Gave his heart to Christ. He was set free on the inside, but he was still a slave on the outside. And I believe one night, Onesimus and Paul were sitting up talking one day. And, and, he, and, and Onesimus just told him his story. He was like, look, man. I'm running. I'm running, man. I'm a slave. I'm running. And his name is Philemon. Paul was like, hold on, man. He said, I know Philemon. I, man, Philemon, man, I, I, I accept. Philemon came to Christ through my ministry. Mm. He became one of my spiritual sons. So Paul only felt that it was right to, to send Onesimus back because he was breaking the law. It was a Roman law. And, and so he was like, no, we're going to send you back. But Paul was sent Onesimus with a letter and sent him with a brother. He sent him with two letters with a brother named uh, Tychemus uh, to Colossae. And, and when he came, he had two letters, one for Philemon, it was a personal letter, and it was one for the church that was inside of Philemon's home. Now check this out. Uh, Colossians 4, 7, Paul writes, Tychemus will tell you all the news about me. His, he's, he's a dear brother, a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you to the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances, but that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus. Mm. And a faithful, a faithful and dear brother, and he is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. So the book of Philemon and the book of Col Colossians are connected. These were two letters that were sent at the same time. That's powerful, ain't it? Wow. So this is why you see his name in there. Father, we love you. Don't let a word drop to the ground. 
We love you, God. Lord, change our hearts today. Yes, Lord. Don't let nobody leave the same. God, hide this in our hearts. Change us today. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Main point one, reconciliation begins with change. And Philemon had, had his heart had been changed by Jesus. His heart writes this. He said, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. He said, because I hear of your love and of your faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus. That you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the, the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. And so here Paul, after, after Philemon gave his heart to Christ through the leadership of Paul, he became a different man. And, and, and as time went on, Paul began to hear about his faith and his love. And I'm telling you, when you get saved, as time goes on, people should hear that you're different. Wow. It should be, it should be rumors about you. Like, man, this brother, man, his faith and his love is outstanding. And this is what Paul said. He said, man, I've been hearing it, but I want to show you why Paul was doing this. Because in verses 4 and 5, Paul is speaking with wisdom about Philemon's love and faith toward Christ. Toward Christ. Because he is wanting Philemon to forgive Onesimus, his runaway slave, and receive him as a brother. And this is the theme of this story. I want everybody to understand that. Right. He was amplifying his love and his faith toward Christ because he's about to get to something. Mm. You got to encourage people first. Before, you know, when you have a meeting and stuff, you always show the hot, the good points first. Man, you're an outstanding person, man. But look, look. I, I, but I, I want to bring this up. <laughs> Well, Listen again uh, to Paul's wisdom in verse 4 and 5 uh, to feeling my Paul writes, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of your faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. Do I need to switch mics? Yeah. And aimed in the right place toward the Lord Jesus. And now Paul adds, thank you, sir. And now Paul adds, and for all the saints. And so here Paul is speaking with wisdom. He said, his aim, his aim is to get Philemon to forgive all listeners and make him a brother in Christ by showing him Philemon, by showing him his own heart. This is why he's talking like that. He brought up your aim towards Christ, your faith and love towards Christ, and all of a sudden he just out of, he said your love for all the saints. But Paul is using wisdom. He's encouraging them first because he has something to say. And just a thought, I know feeling my heart was feeling honored because Paul was speaking well of him, but he was about to drop the bomb on him. Now check it out. In the book of Philemon, verse 7, right after that, Paul said, For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because of the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, through though I am a bond, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you, I, Paul, an old man, he was around 60 years old when he wrote this. And now a prisoner, also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you on my child, Onesimus. You can just imagine when he looked at the letter like. <laughs> who's a, whose father I became in my imprisonment. He was his spiritual father because he planted the seed in him. Formerly the, for the seed of Christ of the gospel. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. And so God allowed Paul to hear about feeling my faith and love for purpose. For the purpose, and you see how the context of it, and he was able to use that. He 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 allowed to hit Paul to hear about feeling my love and uh, faith and for a purpose. And I'm just telling you today, you got to pay attention to what you hear, because you'll never know when you got to use it. Come on, so here it is, Paul broke, broke, busting it down. But Paul was was saying to feeling mine, you you got to you got more than a slave on your hand. Who, who has many souls connected to him for Christ. Come on, come on, Pastor. Wow. He didn't even know. Sometimes we look at people in the natural. Yes, come on, Pastor. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's the way they did Christ. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, we are no longer to look at people from this point of view in the natural. Because yes. you can kill some things in your life. Like they killed Christ. Wow. They didn't know what side of that body was the fullness of God. Fullness of God. They looked at the body. And this is what Paul was saying, man, you got more than a slave on your hand. And I'm asking you today, who in your life do you see in the wrong way? Because in every side of everybody, there's a gift and there's a talent, there's purpose. And it's for us to draw it out. But you got to be able to see it. 
history stated, I'm just going to tell you the end of the stories, that, 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 that this same Onesimus would become the bishop of, of Ephesus. Wow. Timothy was the pastor in our book in Ephesians. Timothy was the pastor over there. But, but, but later on in life, the hero Onesimus, he became the bishop over there. Matter of fact, he would die. He would be martyred for the name of Jesus Christ. He wouldn't deny Christ. He got to that point in his life that he wouldn't deny Christ, and they killed him. This is how powerful he was. Wow. But he was saw as a slave. Philemon's faith and love was about to be tested in a broken relationship for someone who had stole from him and ran off. And let me tell you, you, you can be walking with God one day and loving people and, and you're in the will of God and, and then God shifts your, your heart. That he has he shifted your life toward the people you have hurt and the people who have hurt you. Wow, man. He has just shifted and you'll be growing because, listen, we, we be so happy as Christians, but we never deal with the wounds and the hurts. Tell about it, man. Yeah. Amen, doc. You'll come in church, hallelujah, praise the God, and walk up out of the same wounds. Thank you. So here's Billy Ma having church in this house. He got it going on, but God shifted his heart. Wow. And pointed it toward Philly Ma, somebody who had hurt from him and stole from him. See, I tell you, when you when you get saved, that's 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 cool, but you, but you gotta deal with the unresolved issues Amen. that you've been dealing with from childhood. Amen. Amen. And there's a verse for everything. The Holy Spirit is the power to heal these areas Amen. when we start to face them. Amen. James, y'all give, give Jesus a hand clap because God wants to heal us. There's too many more than Christians. By his wounds, we have been healed. That's why we keep going back. Wounded Christians can't even fight. That's why they get sent home for war. You're not effective. Wow. James 1 2 it said, He said, Consider and feel joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many crime. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Lacking anything, leaving things unresolved, you know, the things in our heart, um, it, it affects us from true change and maturity. Wow. He said, consider a pure joy, my brother, when you face yes. trials. Yes. Face, that means yes. I'm not running from them no more. On, Man, I, I deal with anger. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to be kind. On, I'm, I'm going to deal with jealousy. I'm going to start trusting people. Yes. Onesimus' heart was also changed by Jesus. Verse 11, it said, I appeal to you for my child, uh, Paul said. Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. And this verse lets us know that Onesimus' heart was changed as well. Yeah. The name Onesimus means useful. His, his life, when he accepted Christ, his life had finally lived up to his name. His name meant useful. See, outside of Christ, man, it's hard to see who you really are. But Christ, he, he takes away the sins, he, and he takes things out of the way, and you can start seeing yourself. Put this in your back pocket. It is hard to see who, re who you really are when you're a slave to sin. Wow. You're dealing with alcoholism. Wow. And, and, and right now, the United States, morally, we're corrupt. We're going to destroy ourselves. Gambling. When you're a slave to gambling, smoking weed, wow. and drinking, you're a slave to sin, and you really can't see who you are or what God has for you. It clouds that. Bless you, God. And God ain't gonna use nobody like that. Come on, come on now. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Second Peter two nineteen. Peter writes, "For you are a slave to whatever controls you." I get up in the weather, the Holy Spirit be right there, read your word early in the morning. I'll be like, yes! <laughs> Paul says, Billy, my appeal to you uh, on my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in prison. Now, Paul is telling Billy, mine in this letter, Onesimus outran you, but he didn't outrun God. He didn't outrun God. He, he is a changed man. He is not who you thought he was. Wow, man. I remember when I used to run for my probation officer. Straight up, I had dirty UAs. And man, I used to be like, man, I'm going to be like, 
Strong team. Running again. <laughs> <laughs> Running from God. Running from with my children, neglecting my children, not paying, you know, taking care of my children. Running. I was so ashamed and felt guilt. And now I'm changed. Because I ran into God. Matthew 22, reconciliation requires choice. Uh, verses 12 through 17, Paul, he said, I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. Look at Paul, look at the letter change. He said, I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that the, your goodness might not be by comp compulsion, but by your own accord. For, the, for this, perhaps, is why he was parted from you for a while. Mm. That you might have him back forever. No longer as a, a slave, but more than a bond servant. But as, as a beloved brother, especially to me. But, but how much more to you, but, but both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you will receive me. You see how Paul writes this letter? Amen, amen. He'd be like, oh, this brother's a con <laughs> He wrote that letter, man. I said, man. But that's why leadership is so important. When, you, when the leadership be like, you know, you know what? I think you should do this. I, and I always drop little nuggets on people. You like, be like, yeah. you know what? I think yeah. such and such and stuff. You start listening to your leadership. Uh -huh. It is. Yeah. After reading this, I believe Philemon began to learn as he read the letter from Paul that Onesimus did not belong to him, but that he belonged to God. To God. Amen. 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 Understanding that everyone belongs to God is the secret to effective ministry and loving the people in our lives. Let me repeat that again. Understanding that everyone belongs to God is the secret of effective ministry and, and loving the people in our lives. Because for some, some reason, when you start getting your life line, lined up with God and you, you see that they belong to him, you start treating people better. Yeah. But when you think it's yours, and you, you know how people despise them and all this. They had a nasty attitude. I, I, I can see feeling my reading this letter uh, in excitement at first because Paul, Paul spoke well of it in the beginning. And now I see feeling my heart being challenged while reading this letter from Paul because he had a big choice to make. He had to give up what he already had in mind about Onipus. Mm. And you know, when God comes to us, I'm telling you, he'll shift on you. <laughs> You already have some things in mind and it'll make you sad because he said, no, this way. This way. <laughs> Amen. You, you get sad, man. Amen, Doc. Amen. 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 Like, man, no, I want to cuss this dude out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Then the word will pop in your head. Don't pay back evil for evil. Overcome evil. Woo. Woo. Lord Jesus. Wow. Shaking that word. Amen. <laughs> Proverbs nineteen twenty one. It says, "As many are the plans in a person's heart, but the Lord, but it's the Lord purpose that will prevail." Amen. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord purpose that will prevail. Wow. This is why we sometimes battle with God in the choices we make because wow. we already had in mind what we wanted to do. Wow. We wow. must learn what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh -huh. He said, "Not my will." But your will be done. We got to line up. Listen, that's why when we accept him as, when we confess him as, as, as Lord of our lives, we accept him as Lord of our lives. Lord means I do what you say. Man, that's He's fire. not just saved. That's fire. Just in my times of trouble and need. No, he becomes Lord. That means I do what he say. And he's going to be shifting in your life to make, and in the choices you make because it's his will. Couple nuggets from, from this story. God used a runaway slave to grow Philemon and his love for a person who he thought was beneath him. Mm, 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 mm. You might Lord be the supervisor, person. but you gotta look at people with love. Yeah. The manager. Mm -hmm. Even the pastor. I can't just walk up like, yeah, you ain't the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know me? I'm up here in authority, but when I'm off this platform, I'm the nicest guy. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Amen. You know. It's kindness because we're one. We're one in Christ. Philemon was one of the whole church in his house, and God began changing the way he saw people and the way he would deal with people through this runaway slave. God was growing his compassion for all mankind because, because nothing was lower than a slave. And understand this there's no ministry without compassion. 
There's no ministry without compassion. Help us, Lord. John 3, 16, you got to get that deep down inside of your heart. Yes, yes. God so loved the world. That's everybody. Wow. That's why I said this church is powerful because you walk and you, you see different race. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we, that's why we stand next to none. The church must be in a position that, for backsliders, because that's what no listeners meant. We're coming back. We must be in a position for backsliders and people who've been running from God their whole life. We gotta be in position. That's why this letter had to go together. These two letters had to go together. But I want you to understand that the context is showing us that, that Paul wants Philemon to receive Onesimus back as a brother, but Onesimus had a part to play in this reconciliation as well. He had to go back to Philemon. And they had to be fearful. Yes. You saved? Yes. And God wants you to go back, but your leadership like give you some direction to go back and, and, and you know make it right. Yes. Wow. And so here's Paul working both sides. Because he see what God is revealing to him. God showed me waiting for forgiveness is fearful as well. You wow. know, when you go back and you go into forgiveness and you want somebody, it's fearful. Wow. That can be scary. And God telling you to go back. He don't know what's going on. He's going back to a, a, a situation that he don't even know the result. Mm -hmm. And that's what faith is. God will call you to go back. But Paul teaches us in Philippians 3.13, Paul writes this, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, he said, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I was like, that was context, though. Because <laughs> some of us, we will take that and we have to stand on it. Mm -hmm. Paul said, man, don't go back. Just keep going. Yeah. That's context. Yes. But in this, Onesimus has to go back to get some things, to, to make some things right. Yes. Verse 12 says this. So no, no, let me, this, I have to reiterate this. Sometimes God will call you to go back to where you came from and make things right with the people who hurt us and the people you have hurt in your lives. Yes. I'm telling you. Wow, I told you, there ain't no ministry and you sitting up kicking it and hallelujah, but you're going to cuss this person out or you've been business to this person the last five years or something. You say you've been forgiven. God will call, man, he will deal with your heart to go back and ask the person for forgiveness. Or begin to forgive some people who hurt you. Amen. Because I tell you, man, unforgiveness speaks from the grave. Yeah. It takes courage to go back to the person you have wronged or to the person you have hurt without knowing the outcome. All you know is God is he impressing on your heart to go back. That's all you know. And that's scary. And, and this, is what I, this is what God showed me while I was writing this. Some fathers need to go back. Man. Just because you ain't got the the, the, the the amount of money that you think you're supposed to have. You better tell the doctor. You gotta go back. Because kids they just want to see their dad, man. Amen, doc. Amen. And the mama just gotta stay out the way for a little while. Amen. Because she be that magnet standing behind it to brothers that struggle. The baby come out, she see, oh my god, daddy. They just kick and having fun. They go, mama, you like this. <laughs> 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 you know, let, let your child see his son. Yes, sir. A father is very important to the child. Amen. 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 Some husbands and wives need to get back together, need to go back. It ain't that serious. Yeah. It's fixable. Right. Some of you need to go back to school. You ran from school, didn't finish. God said, go back. Some of y'all running from God. And you need to get back. And that takes courage. And I remember I was in Team Challenge, Brother Mark here today. I remember I was in Team Challenge, man. I, the first time I came was in 2007. They said I was a bully, man. <laughs> I was like, man, stop playing, you know. And I would be disrespectful to the staff. Now, these people trying to help me. This is a faith-based program trying to help me with my alcohol and drug problem and my life issues. And I'm running through their breakfast. I ended up graduating, though, but look. I, I ended up having the same problem. We're going back to my same position. And I had to go back. I, was, I said, man, I felt so bad. God was like, go back. All I knew was God told me to go back. 
to the same place I was reckless at. But they was waiting on me in love. Amen. And in my closing, main point three, reconciliation is often costly. Philly my 18, Paul writes, he, 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 if he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge it to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. And, you know, this letter, it never said that in this letter, like, that he owed him money. It was stated that he had, when he had left Philly Mom's house, he had stole some money he was inside the house. Because that's what he kept, kept talking about. He owed, he owed, and, or, or it could have been his position as a slave. You know, he lost a lot of money because he wasn't there. So, um, that could have been the point. But, but remember, Paul sent Tychicus back with Onesimus with, with two letters. And one in the church of Colossae, one for the church of Colossae and Philly Mom's house, and one personal letter for Philly Mom himself. And I believe these, both of these letters, they helped him to understand the power of forgiveness. Wow. I just want you to understand that. It was, it's, this whole letter is about the power of forgiveness. That's what this whole letter is about. That you need to forgive some people. Some, there's some people in your life right now that you ain't forgave yet, and Christ forgave you. Amen. Wow. Ouch. 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 And you know what? When you hold on to unforgiveness, it makes you a slave. Amen. And so Onesimus and Billy Mom, they both needed to be set free. Yeah. Billy Mom was, he, 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 he was, he had unforgiveness, so he was spiritually a slave, and Billy Mom was physically a slave. They, they both needed to be set free. And when you when you keep on forgiveness, look, it just weighs you down. Y'all remember the old saying, old oh, unforgiveness is like you drinking poison. Oh, I forgot the rest of it. <laughs> but it's like you drinking poison and hoping that person dies. Yep, that's it. Unforgiveness ain't nothing to play with, man. After Onesimus read this personal letter from Paul, he heard the letter in the, to the church as well. He, he read his letter, then he, now he got to listen to this letter because he a part of the church, so he get it. And I was thinking, like, if did Paul have him in mind when he read it? Because Colossians 3, 12, Paul writes, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, he said, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He said, bear with one another. Forgive one another, if, as you have been, uh, even forgive one another. If any one of you have a grievance against someone, forgive them. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Uh, Philly Mom, he was hearing it both ways. And I'm telling you, when God wants you to do so, guess what? You can't outrun him. You'll be riding down the street in your car and look up in the be on a billboard sign. <laughs> Man, you crazy. <laughs> Because it's his will and not yours. And sometimes we be trying to run from God's will when it's going to bless you. Amen. At the end of one Onesimus' life, I told you, he, he, man, he was a bishop. It's, it's just all it's going to do is bless you and the person that's connected to you. Somebody needs to be freed up. Somebody owe you some money, let them have it. It's crazy whenever you see a person and you ain't got it, and every time you see them, just because you got the, you in a position, and every time you see them, that person feel less. Free them up. Wow, Doc. Wow, man. Here are a couple tips to help you understand the power of forgiveness. When God is calling you to forgive someone, always understand forgiveness don't come with feelings. They come by faith. I just read it to you. Forgive as the Lord forgave. That's a word. That's a scripture. And it don't come with feelings. It comes by faith. So when I forgive someone, the next day the enemy going to go just like this. <laughs> and you're going to feel that same way about that person. But you got to understand you did it by faith. It has nothing to do with feelings. Help us, Lord. And you have to repeat to yourself, forgive it. And you just keep it moving. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. And the more you 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 you, you speak life to yourself, forgive it. It goes in that wound. Then the wounds start to close up. Then the stitches come. Then the stitches come. 
Then a couple more weeks pass, the stitches start breaking. Because he's still saying forgiving. Because he's still bothering you about that person. Forgiving, but the stitches are breaking loose. Now the, the, the pastor, now you're talking to, now you're going to life groups and you're talking to the pastor. Now, now they helping you get the stitches out because it's, it's, it's healed. And now you got a scar. And that's a testimony. That's what a scar is. We need to be healed. Unforgiveness. That's why the cross results is so powerful. When we come to Christ. And there's some of you here today that, that's so far away from Christ, you need to be healed. You're broken. I'm broke. I spoke to a brother this morning that was broken. And I told him, I know what you need. You need Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's continue with worship. Church. It ain't enough to judge a like the life church. I feel the presence of the Lord in the life church. 